chapter 1081 filled with so many good things. The last time we left off with Garp, all of us was hyped as hell for him, and this chapter doesn't ease up on that. Garp is a straight menace, all right? So we all know that he did that devastating punch to the town that destroyed a whole lot of shit, right? Specifically, Galaxy Impact. Well, tell me why this man has the audacity to say, when did I get so weak? After, that's probably one of the best feats that we've seen in the series so far, and he has to go ahead and say that. Garp, Oda, both of you guys, you guys are teasing the hell out of us for what Garp's power was truly like back in his golden days. Anyway, so his ship is okay. I was thinking for the last chapter, like, how the hell is he gonna save his ship? His ship is in midair. It's gonna break into a million pieces at this rate. But no, it's all good because of Prince Gruss, Prince Gruus. He saves the ship with his clay devil fruit, which allows the ship to have a smooth landing. Then we see the sweetest thing, Kobe and Garp reuniting. Even Helmeppo is in tears. He's so glad that Kobe didn't die. They're about to be back together until a certain ice former admiral appears aokiji ruins this sweet reunion by freezing he body we didn't really see much of her by the way i haven't had the time to look it up so maybe somebody can comment i'm not deep into theories but i've heard people say that he body might have a connection to akainu i'm not sure where's the connection in that and that's why aokiji froze this person first because of his beef with akainu personally i still think there's something sketchy going with aokiji turning to a pirate especially joining blackbeard Although this chapter did do pretty well to make it make sense. The chapter also does a good job reminding you how dangerous Aokiji is. I mean, you gotta remember this man's introduction to the series alone. We felt true fear the first time we saw Aokiji. The way that he froze Robin and the way that Luffy was no match for him at all. Yeah, this guy was crazy. So it fits perfectly that we see this backstory afterwards of how he joined Blackbeard. Into a flashback, this is two years after the great battle that happened between Aokiji and Akainu for the title of Fleet Admiral. This is taking place on a certain island in the New World and Aokiji has a bunch of people that's frozen up. With those people being members from Blackbeard's crew, immediately Blackbeard knows the risk of trying to fight Aokiji after his crewmates being frozen. He bears the risk of going against Aokiji one on one in a battle, although I'm sure it wouldn't be a one on one, he did have other crewmates to help him fight. But he would have probably tried to use his Gura Gura Nomi, and that's not a good thing at all when you have a bunch of people that are frozen. At this rate, Aokiji has the upper hand and Blackbeard doesn't want to see his crewmates die, especially with important members that look like the obvious one, the biggest one there, San Juan Wolf being frozen. And I believe that's Doc Q right there, and it looks like he's frozen too, while other members like Van Auger, Katarina Davon, they look like they're chilling. They're right behind Blackbeard, so everything is cool for them. No, for real, like, Literally cool. The whole place is frozen around. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll stop. Shortly afterwards, Blackbeard and Aokiji and the whole Blackbeard crew, they're having a good time. Aokiji is just telling the story of how we fought Akainu. They're drinking. They're having a blast together. Aokiji is even telling these corny dad jokes. He says, Akainu told them when comrades fight in a death match, things can get really heated. To which Aokiji replies, that's because you're magma and they start dying in the bar. And even shows his missing leg. And I think it's actually the first time in the manga alone that we've seen Aokiji show off his uh, missing leg. I think, if I'm not mistaken. The only other time we've seen him show off his missing leg is for the Film Z movie. And then an illustration Oda did officially for the Film Z movie. Moving along, they're making good conversation. They begin talking about the man with the burned scar. And how this man with the burned scar apparently has one of the four road pony glyphs. And apparently he travels on a jet black ship. And it said that any enemy who approaches him gets swallowed up by a giant whirlpool. Immediately, I'm thinking of characters like Dragon, especially with his devil fruit potentially being something to control the weather. However, in the community, I've also seen that the man with the burn scar is Saul. So you guys let me know who do you think it is and why. Next up, Lafitte messes up bad. He starts whispering to Blackbeard saying, hey, you know, if we take his powers, it could be really huge an advantage to us. But Aokiji overhears this and he's ready to turn the whole freaking place into ice. Blackbeard smoothly de-escalates the situation though. He admits that his crewmate says something stupid and he's not here for that. It is there that we see him officially throw the pitch to Aokiji to join his crew. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Blackbeard was actually pretty convincing in all this. Pointing out to Aokiji that one, he's not in the world government anymore. So he has nothing else to do at the moment and they took his justice away. Aokiji obviously had his own ideals and his own sense of justice and how he would run things in a world government if he was to become fleet admiral. And now all that went up in flames when Akainu became fleet admiral. 
Sounds to me like Aokiji is just mad that he got his ass whooped in that battle. Nah, nah, I'm just, I'm just playing. But you understand where he's coming from in all this, and understand why he's easily convinced by Blackbeard with these words. Continuing what Blackbeard says, he admits that we aren't a bunch of friends sailing together. We are pirates and we have common goals. That's about it. You are free, so do what you want. Hear me out. I know we all despise Blackbeard a little bit for what his actions have done in the past. He's the reason a lot of bad shit happened in the One Piece universe. And no doubt he's going to be the reason a lot of bad shit happens in the future of the One Piece universe. But as a captain, I can't help but compare him to Luffy. Yeah, they're opposites, but at the same time, they're so alike. It seems to me as long as you're in Blackbeard's crew, he does have good intentions for you. He wants you to have your freedom. He wants you to become your own person and chase the dream that you have. Just like Luffy wants that for every person in his own crew. As a pirate and as a captain of the pirate crew, that's really commendable that he'll allow his crewmates to follow their dreams and not just do everything solely for his purpose. But don't get me wrong, as nice as this sounds, you know at the end of the day, he still has manipulation going on within the crew to get his own motives and his own goals to succeed. And that's how Aokiji ended up joining Blackbeard. Oh, and in case I forgot to mention, when we go back to Aokiji and Garp right now, it's official that the 10th Titanic captain of Blackbeard's crew this whole time was Aokiji, as it's labeled right here in a box. If you're one of the people who thought Aokiji wasn't the 10th Titanic captain, uh, I don't even know what to say. I think it was pretty obvious this whole time. And it's wonderful to see it finally confirmed. Aokiji versus Garp now. Aokiji throws an ice ball at Garp and he says, Can't kill off your first student to save your favorite one, huh? Don't let anything hold you back, you fool. And whoa, that sounds like a little bit of jealousy right there from Aokiji. Aokiji was once learning so much for Garp and now the roles have changed. It's now Kobe and it seems like Kobe's his favorite. From the extreme lengths that Garp would go to save Kobe. But come on, you know Garp ain't gonna go down like no bitch. Quickly jumps up in the air to where Aokiji is, grabs Aokiji and throws his ass with a move called Blue Hole. I know Aokiji has to defend the turf because he can't upset Blackbeard and all this, but how the hell did he think this was gonna go down? Let's just do the math and look at the statistics here. Garp was about to murder Akainu and Marineford. We all know it. It's clear as day. Akainu and Aokiji had a pretty even one-on-one -on -one battle that lasted a couple days. Hmm, I wonder who's not going to take an absolute beating in all this. But at the same time, I gotta give Aokiji credit. He was once in the Marines, he was once under Garp. Maybe he knows a weakness that Garp has, although it seems really unlikely. His best defense right now is having Hibari frozen up, and maybe if he freezes up a couple other people to have the upper hand. We'll see how that goes though. I have a feeling that this battle is going to end right here for us viewers, and it's going to be off screen. I hope not, because we've been having a lot of battles off screen. Speaking of battles that are off screen, now let's go back to Law vs. Blackbeard and we see the result of who won that fight. One of the first things we see is Law's hat, it's on the ground and we cut to the polar tang and it is destroyed, similar to how Kid's ship was destroyed when he went up against Shanks. I gotta say, it really hurts when we see these ships completely destroyed because at that point, there's no going back. They just lost their main battleship. That's like when the Mary got ripped away from us, right? We were devastated about it, but this one has a different effect to it when your opponent is the reason that your ship is destroyed. And your opponent at any given moment can kill you and the rest of your crew. That's the power Blackbeard holds over Law and his crew currently. Blackbeard also begins to talk about the 100 pirates that Law took at the Rocky Port incident and reveals they're actually hiding in fear at Hachinosu. It's not huge, but I thought it was pretty cool that they revealed that. Okay, but now let's go into one of the most coolest looking Sulong forms I've seen in the series so far. I know you guys and I waited for this to happen during Wano. I felt like it would have been a really good position for Beppo to use this in Wano, but he actually awakens his Sulong this chapter. And he awakens it without a moon. How is this possible? Well, it looks like Chopper whipped up a drug that'll make it activate without looking at the moon, and we see Beppo actually put it in his mouth and eat it. So shout out to Chopper for potentially saving Law and his whole crew. Blackbeard continues on saying, should I sell? Should I use the Api Api Nomi fruit? Is it true that you can make me immortal? You can imagine the ideas that are going through Blackbeard's head right now. There's so many things you can accomplish with Law's Devil Fruit alone. There's no point even thinking about selling it for however much because Law's Devil Fruit is that damn good. Before Blackbeard could do anything though, Beppo comes in with the save and look at this polar Sulong form. It just looks so menacing and badass. Maybe it's because it's brand new and this is the first time I'm seeing it, but I gotta say Beppo is probably my favorite looking Sulong form. And to you carrot haters, carrot is definitely second for me. 
hey man, we don't gotta fight. Don't fight me on this. It's just a cool looking form for her, guys. But this isn't about her. This is about Beppo in the moment. Needless to say, everyone in Blackbeard and his crew is really surprised that he turned into Su Long when there's not a full moon activated. <laughs> I said activated like the moon has a power up. When the full moon isn't appearing. So Beppo's in Su Long, and as you know, when they're in that form, they're really fast. So he manages to knock Blackbeard back, scoop up Law, and dive right into the sea to escape. Leaving the rest of the Heart Pirates behind with Blackbeard defeated. Now he is booking it out of there. One, he's a polar bear, so you know the boy can swim. Two, he's in his Sulong form. Yeah, he's out of there. Law's not a fan of this decision though, obviously. He's the captain and he can't bear the thought of leaving his crewmates behind. But nah, Beppo's allegiance is to his captain and he does not want to see his captain die right now. At that rate, Law would have for sure got his devil fruit stolen and killed off. We were this close to hearing Blackbeard enter somewhere and say, Room! That would have been so damn scary. And with the final box, it's saying, And his heart pirates were defeated. A humiliating retreat. So that's Kid now. He's been destroyed by Shanks. And that was devastating. And the next person was Law. Probably not as humiliating as Kid's defeat. But at the same time, Law had to retreat. I see people commenting saying Luffy's going to be next because Law and Kid got defeated. But come on, man. Law and Kid aren't Yonkos, are they? And at the same time, they don't have the best crew compared to Luffy. Luffy and his crew got it locked down. I'm really hoping I don't eat my words here and this isn't another Sabote incident. But no, I have faith that Luffy and his crew got it locked down and they're going to be able to escape Egghead alright. What does this mean for Law at the moment now that he's retreated and he lost his whole crew? I mean, all he has is Beppo at the moment. Does he end up meeting with the Grand Fleet? Does he end up meeting with Luffy in the future and making another alliance with him? You guys let me know, but at the moment Law got his shit stolen. The road poneglyphs are gone. And speaking of the road poneglyphs, let's break it down to who has it and what this means for the future. Starting with Blackbeard, he has three road poneglyphs. Obviously, the ones that he stole from Law, which was the Wano and the Zo. And the third being Big Moms that was stolen by Aokiji. Shanks also has three. He has Wano, stolen from Kid. He has Big Moms, which was stolen from Kid as well. And then the third being Elbaf. Lastly, our boy Luffy, he has the same ones that Blackbeard has. The race is on for the final poneglyphs. Shanks needs Zo. Luffy and Blackbeard need Shanks, which he got from Elbaf. So it could go a number of ways, with Luffy running into Shanks and then Blackbeard swooping in to steal something. A triple threat going on. All I know is shit is about to get hot. And I want to thank the comment that somebody sent me from Reddit, who pointed out who has which rope on the list, because honestly, it's a pretty hard time for me to keep track of them all. What I keep thinking about is these guys have three... I want to see my boy Buggy somehow get all four before all of them. I think that would be the best thing possible for this series. With Buggy's luck, it's not impossible. There's going to be some way that Buggy ends up obtaining all four. and It's going to be absolutely hysterical when we see him do that. Another great chapter from Oda this week. It was amazing. We have break next week. My only complaint being I really don't enjoy the off screens. I was really hoping we at least see like a final attack and then see the defeat of Law if anything. But no, we just went straight to the end when he was already defeated. I'm not a big fan of the off-screening because these are legendary battles that we're seeing here. Law is a great character. Blackbeard is setting up to be probably the biggest villain and the most favorite villain in One Piece once we see everything for him go down. So I feel kind of robbed when we see battles like that and we don't see the ending of those battles, at the very least. That's just me though. I don't know how you guys feel about it. Comment what you guys think. Do you guys agree with me on that? Do you guys disagree? Let me know why. However... See you guys in the next chapter. My next review is going to be either One Punch Man or Dragon Ball. So see you then.